This week, we are taking a deep dive into the impact of AI on our lives. And today, we're spotlighting a new way AI could impact medicine. The White House is hoping to use artificial intelligence to match already approved drugs with untreated diseases. And the federal government is giving the nonprofit Every Cure nearly $50 million to develop the technology. Every Cure co founder, Dr. David Fagenbaum, joins me now for more on this. Doctor, I know you're busy, so thank you for joining us. Talk to me about this program because your pilot program has already identified some promising treatments for sickle cell disease, ALS, and more. So how does this technology work right now, and how are you trying to advance it? Well, we're utilizing the world's biomedical knowledge to identify the most promising new uses for existing medicines. There's already 3,000 approved drugs, and there are thousands of diseases without any treatments. And so we leverage the world's knowledge to look for patterns so that we can connect existing drugs to diseases and patients that could potentially benefit. So can you explain this like I'm five, but give me an example of how the AI is leading to you to say, oh, actually, we can use this existing medicine to treat this thing we weren't treating before. I know you're sure, laughing, but you, you know, you know, <laughs> we don't understand how this works and we're trying really hard, Doc. Absolutely. I can share about it. A real example. So a patient was getting ready to go into hospice care. No treatments were working for him. And we utilized the world's knowledge. So we looked for patterns across everything that's been uh, researched and developed by the medical community, looked for patterns across the world's knowledge. And this artificial intelligence algorithm found a pattern for a drug called adalimumab that would suggest that it might be useful for this particular disease. And so based on this pattern that it found that it looked like other drugs that have worked for diseases, we treated this patient with adalimumab and it saved his life. And this is inspired in, in many ways by my own personal journey. I was a healthy medical student until I became critically ill with a disease and I also repurposed a drug to save my life. So how did you go from, from that, spending months in the hospital and deciding, you know, I'll, I'll take my treatment into my own hands. By the way, before this technology was anywhere where it is now, how did that lead you to what you're doing now? So I'm alive because of one of these repurposed drugs, and it, I just celebrated 10 years of remission. And so uh, over the course of the last 10 years, we've been working to identify more drugs for more patients and working with my, my co-founder, Grant Mitchell and Tracy Sakura to understand ways that we could do this at scale. We've now unlocked 17 repurposed treatments for diseases that they were not intended for. And I'm so proud of the 17 that we've unlocked, but with the advent of artificial intelligence and the ability to find these patterns within the data that humans we can't do, we've decided that we want to scale our impact beyond the 17 repurposed treatments that have saved thousands of lives to a world where we're actually repurposing thousands of drugs to save millions of lives. Oh, so glad, first of all, to see you doing well, but also to see you turning that into something that could have such an impact. So how do you see this use of AI impacting healthcare and medicine in general? Are there other ways that what you're doing could be used down the line? Absolutely. So we are identifying patterns within the world's knowledge that lead us to think that one drug might be useful for one particular disease. But there are so many more opportunities to use the exact same sorts of algorithms, maybe to help to improve diagnosis of rare disease. Maybe it's to identify ways that we can manufacture these products more quickly. But the world we're in right now is so different from the world we're in even just a few years ago. We use artificial intelligence to identify the first treatment for a patient a few years ago. And the tools that we have now are so far advanced compared to even just then. So, Dr. Fagenbaum, what, what excites you most about the role of AI in medicine, and what scares you most about it? Well, what excites me the most is the idea that people can live lives when they, they, they would not have been able to otherwise. I'm not supposed to be here. The drug that saved my life wasn't made for my disease, but we discovered that it could be useful and it has saved my life. And we've now done this for so many more patients. All I can think about are all the people out there that have a horrible disease and there's a drug sitting on their pharmacy shelf that could help them that we just need to unlock for them. So that's what gets me so excited, the lives that can be saved utilizing this technology. I think that many of us, you know, share the fa the fears of, of artificial intelligence and how, um, you know, maybe it can be utilized in, in ways that could be harmful. But the way that we're utilizing it is really about saving as many lives as possible. All right, Dr. David Fagenbaum, it's so fascinating and so great to have you on to explain it. Thank you. Thanks so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.